Gute. In my recent videos, I often talk about Mycroft AI and their open voice assistant. But I never introduced you to that voice assistant or made a technical walkthrough on how to set it up. And this issue will be fixed in that video. Gute. Hacky, techy, nerd stuff. Open voice enthusiast. Open voice, open future. But before going into the details, when we take a look to Mycroft AI webpage under Mycroft.ai, we will see a Mimic 3 banner showing Mimic 3 is released, which is Mycroft's technology for text to speech. If you haven't seen my video I've made on that, I will link it down below in the description box. And the second important part is that Mycroft AI, and I'm not linked to Mycroft AI as a company, I'm just happy to be an active member on their community. They are not just building a software stack for the voice assistant, but in addition they are building a hardware line called the Mark. Their first revision, the Mark 1, has been released quite a few years ago. But when it comes to the second revision, so the Mark 2, there has really been lots of discussion going on in the Mycroft community, mainly for two reasons. On the one side, there has been a change in design compared to the originally Kickstarter campaign compared to the final product design. And the second reason for lots of discussion is the delay for delivery. As you can see, originally in the Kickstarter campaign there was a release schedule for March 2018. And by now, which is summer 2022, the Mark II has not been shipped yet. But the newest release schedule date is by September this year. And if we scroll a little bit more down on their webpage, we can see that Mycroft is open. And that's true, because it's an open source project. But the second phrase here, being privacy by default, I would like to give my personal thoughts, and just these are my personal thoughts, as I'm not linked to Mycroft AI, but I would like to share my thoughts on that privacy aspect. Because lots of people joining Mycroft community for the first time, they think that privacy by default means automatically that Mycroft AI can run offline. And by default, Mycroft's voice assistant requires internet access. And not just internet access, it's required that you register your installation, your device on Mycroft's own cloud infrastructure. But how does this deal with privacy by default? So my personal thoughts are, it's a compromise. If you would like people to use it out of the box without lots of technical issues around that, you have to provide a working, a good working configuration right away. So as it's a voice assistant, there are mainly two aspects that are really important that they work really good. That's the speech recognition, so the STT part. Because if this is not working great and the request spoken by the user will be misinterpreted by the voice assistant, the answer probably has to be wrong. And the second aspect is the quality of the text-to-speech voice output. So if it's not sounding this good, probably users will not use that Microsoft voice assistant. So the voice processing parts are an important part when it comes to the user experience and user acceptance for a voice assistant. By default, Microsoft's voice assistant uses Google's speech recognition technology because it offers a really good and low word error rate. So the recognition is really good. If you're using your voice assistant in English, there might be alternatives that run offline. But depending on your language, it might be hard to find a, as good as Google's STT working alternative. But to keep that privacy aspect in mind, Mycroft offers a proxy layer in between. So your Mycroft voice assistant installation will put your voice data to Mycroft's infrastructure. They will remove all that IP address and metadata from the request and forward it to Google. So you can use Google's good recognition rate, but Google will not know your IP address and will not see your original request, which is good for privacy reasons. But this is an aspect you have to keep in mind. Mycroft's installation for voice assistance by default will require you to register your device. If you would like to run Mycroft's voice assistant offline, it is possible 
because it has a really nice modular architecture. So you can replace the voice processing parts, the STT and the TTS parts and you have to replace the backend with a locally hosted backend. But it is possible, but it is not the default configuration. Because again, my honest opinion on that is if you would like to make it easy for an average user to run an open voice assistant, you cannot specifically require that average user to set up Raspberry Pi stuff or local backends with STT services hosted and TTS services hosted and backends hosted. This is cool for technical people who are interested in, but an average user probably will not be willing to do this. So this is something you have to keep in mind when you install Microsoft AI. Do not be confused if the first phrase you hear by your personal private voice assistant that you have to register this installation in the cloud. But that's all for the intro and now let's go and install Mycroft's voice assistant. So let's start with uh, the, the cool stuff now uh, and install Mycroft's voice assistant. Um, the first step should be taking a look to Mycroft's webpage which is under mycroft.ai and let's start by going to the documentation and let's click get Mycroft. So as you can see, there are various ways uh, available to install a Mycroft voice assistant. Um, if you have a Raspberry Pi and uh, you can use uh, a simple image that is provided by Mycroft AI, uh, you can install it manually uh, for Linux operating systems. Uh, Windows and Mac is not um, supported at the moment and you can run it on Docker and Android so or use one of the um, um, hardware devices called Mark. So I will give um, the manual install for Linux a try. So let's hit that Linux link, check the system requirements. We have Linux installed. My computer is connected to the internet. I know what's the terminal. And that your device has a built-in microphone and speakers. Uh, that's probably one of the, the, the most frequently asked problems on the Minecraft chat and Minecraft community. Why isn't my microphone um, detected? Why isn't my speech, my voice uh, recognized? So um, it's hard to give a general answer on that. So if you have struggle with um, audio setup and you and, uh, and the, the frequently asked questions on that specific audio troubleshoot did not help you, uh, please uh, hop on to Mycroft chat or Mycroft's community and um, ask for help on your individual audio setup. So let's scroll down and check how to get started. It's pretty straightforward uh, to install. So um, to install the so-called Mycroft Core, as I've said, it's a really modular architecture and the Mycroft Core is the main component um, and um, it's, it's pretty simple to install. We just switch into our user home, uh, clone the latest repository for Mycroft Core and uh, run a developer script. So let's uh, give this one a try. Clone complete. Now let's switch into the directory and run that shell script. In my setup, um, the better working precise wake word detection is not uh, working, so I have to use uh, the the older Pocket Sphinx uh, technology for wake word detection. By default, Mycroft uses the wake word "Hey Mycroft." Then next question is to use master, which is obviously the more stable version or um, if I would like the, to use the work in progress developer branch. Um, being a normal user and not a skilled developer or developing on Microsoft's core, I would recommend you to use the uh, stable master branch. You can choose do you like to check for updates on every start of your Microsoft's voice assistant. Um, I would recommend you to do this. So answer yes. This next question is on uh, text-to-speech technology. So Mycroft uses TTS Mimic. Um, you can build your Mimic uh, to operate locally, but I would re uh, recommend you to skip this one. And um, if you like local TTS, please check out Mimic 3, which runs on devices and has a nice 
uh, quality in its voices. So uh, I would not like to build Mimic locally. If you would like to develop skills, by default skills will uh, be under slash opt slash Minecraft slash skills. Um, you can automatically check your code for um, style guides. So then when you contribute um, your code to Minecraft's community, um, you will not have to adjust your code because of any style sheets struggles. So I would recommend you to answer with yes. But probably if you just used your voice assistant, um, this is not really relevant for you. So this is looking good. Um, all types of dependencies have been resolved, downloaded and installed. And as you can see, uh, Minecraft setup um, complete. Logs uh, available on var logs or var log Minecraft setup log. So that's looking good so far. Now it's time to run it by, by running a start Minecraft shell script. And this shell script can take various arguments, um, such as which service to be started. Uh, and again, it's a modular architecture, so there are various services available. So if you can, you can just run start Minecraft shell all, and all of the available services will be um, will be set up and uh, will be started. And we can see the start Minecraft shell script. If I just run it without any arguments, you can see uh, there's the help printed on the command line. Um, and that's the same as we see on the web-based documentation. So now let's run our shell script. And I will use sudo um, to get rid of any permission problems when it comes to startup services or um, creating new log files. So let's start Minecraft all. We can see here is um, already up to date as we configured during the setup to check for new releases or new updates uh, on startup. So everything is uh, up to date. So and we can see that various services like the skill service, audio service, voice service and enclosure has been started. Please check documentation for what what's happening um, at which type of service. Or you can run Minecraft um, CLI client or you can run alternatively start Minecraft shell script with the CLI parameter. And uh, now you can see a simple UI um, and as you can see in the bottom right the MIC level. So the microphone level that normally will go up and down as I'm using my microphone right now for recording this screen sharing session. So this probably will not work in my audio setup. But now you can see what I've mentioned in the intro that every Minecraft installation has to be registered on Minecraft's own backend infrastructure. So let's register this new installation. So for that, let's go back to our browser and open home.mycroft.ai. I'm already logged in. And then you can click on the upper right on your, on your image of your avatar and click devices. And you can see I already have two devices connected. And uh, now let's create a new one by hitting add device and entering the pairing code. The pairing code is printed on the command line. Um, in that history field. So let's enter this one. You can choose by default between the British male and an American male voice. As you can see, uh, out of the box, um, just English text and speech voices are supported. So I would recommend you checking out Mimic 3 or use a cloud based text to speech. And uh, we can choose a wake word. As I've said, the default is Hey Mycroft, but there are some other wake words available. When I hit the next button, um, Minecraft should automatically um, recognize that the new installation has been registered on home Minecraft. Click next and let's see. And here we are. So your device is now paired. Please wait a few moments. I finish loading skills. So that worked. So now um, 
the new installation, the new device is registered on Home Minecraft AI and can be used. When it comes to configuration, uh, Minecraft has lots of configuration files or um, several places uh, from etc Minecraft uh, conf in your home directory, home uh, Minecraft conf. So there are various files available for configuration. So it's recommended using a nice command line tool provided by Minecraft to do configuration stuff. So to get a list of every configuration value, just run Minecraft config and get parameter. This will print out a long JSON format with every configuration key value is available. Um, there's lots of stuff on language settings, time zone settings, um, your, <laughs> your home city settings, so lots of stuff. And uh, one aspect is that text-to-speech configuration um, by default, which is used, which uh, module, here are various modules available. We have Mimic, Mimic version 2, um, eSpeak or Mozilla. And uh, if you choose Mozilla, you can also use a Koki TTS server because the API is compatible on that point. So, um, and if you just like to see a special configuration, you can um, filter it, for example, to get TTS and then you will just print, uh, see the block on a text-to-speech configuration. Now let's switch the module from eSpeak to Mozilla, for example. And for that, we just run Microsoft config set TTS module uh, Mozilla. And now that's done. Let's just check it again with get TTS. And as we can see now, the module is set to Mozilla. So that's probably uh, the most easy way to do configuration handle to not mess up any file locations or edit in the wrong file or do some issues on that white space json hell so just use that Minecraft configuration command line tool and everything should be should be fine and i think that's probably all i can show you on the installation and the first steps on how to register your device and um, how to see and adjust configuration settings. Um, please check out Mycroft's uh, documentation as it provides a really helpful uh, beginner's guide and first steps. Yeah, and uh, if you like that video, please give it a thumb up. Uh, let's uh, discuss in the comments. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate it and uh, have a nice day. And if you like, we might see us next time. Bye.